Welcome back to another GeekWatt video and today I'm going to be taking a look at this. This is a PCIe capture card from StarTech and this is my review. So let's first start off with a bit of context and a little bit of background as to why you would ever buy a PCIe capture card. Now most people when they're recording gameplays of something like a computer or an Xbox One, Playstation 4, that kind of stuff, will use something like an Elgato which is a USB capture card. But these have always had one problem. And that problem has always been latency. Now, Razer recently released their Razer Ripsaw uh, USB 3 capture card, which aims to uh, basically remedy that issue. However, having something like a PCIe capture card is normally the better option, and there's a few reasons for that. But let's start with a physical overview of the card. Now, there isn't really too much to see here. We've got a full height PCIe uh, slot, however, we do also get included in the box a half height slot as well. If you're using a much smaller office computer, you are able uh, to put this in. We've also got a DVI i port which allows for the transfer of video and audio signals for recording of audio as well as a, uh, a, comp a composite uh, not composite sorry a an older style kind of video input uh, port that the circular ones you can see in the b-roll now if we look at the top we've basically got loads of connectors that you really don't care about but there's a few things that you will care about quite a lot uh, there's a h.264 encoder on the top of this card now james what does that mean now a h.264 encoder is featured on something like a gtx 750 ti uh, and nvidia cards and Nvidia's Maxwell cards for example and it basically means uh, that as opposed to having all the stress on your CPU when you're recording it's instead on the GPU of the card, uh, not the GPU, the encoder of the card. So it takes all the stress away from everything else and puts it on this. Now latency, as I said, has always been a massive issue. So that's the delay between recording something and your voice or recording something and it being streamed. So let's say you're a streamer, for example, and you want to stream and you've got an Elgato and you've got, uh, let's say you've got something like a three second delay, which means that you then have to offset your voice by three seconds as well as your five second stream delay and then your three second stream buffer to put it up. So all these extra seconds that you're having to add from your voice being late means that's an extra three seconds four five seconds that your chat is behind uh, that your chat is behind you and if you're streaming that's that's not what you want you also don't want your video and your voice and your uh, uh, the video and the voice to be out of sync because that's just a pain you don't want to have to sync it up in post-production because you want things to be streamlined as possible in the recording process and whilst the razor rip sort does fix that problem this is probably a slightly better solution now that that might that my opinion of that being a better solution might change as the video progresses, but you'll see what I mean by that in a moment. This operates on a PCI. It's a Gen 3, but it's a, a, a 1x slot, so it's, it's going to fit in any lane: an X4 lane, an X8 lane, an X16 lane, all that good stuff. It's a PCIe lane X uh, 1x slot, which is great. You're not going to be using too much bandwidth or all that good stuff. Now you've got loads of connectors on the front for loads of compatibility with loads of devices. Uh, you've got audio connectors, video connectors, all that good stuff. You've got loads of capacitors on the front. And this brings me to the next drawback of this. Some areas this are a little bit overkill and some just aren't good enough. Now it's green, which is disgusting. Most people have got windows. I've got a window on my case, which has been moved from up there to down here. And this is just not, it's not nice to look at. And I know what you're thinking, James, why are you being so picky? But why do you think they make graphics cards and CPU coolers and cases look so good? It's so you can show off your hardware and this, it just doesn't take advantage of that, unfortunately. And I was really excited to get this plugged in, have a bit of a play around with it, see what the video quality was. So I recorded some video using the, the software provided. The software provided is adequate, it's okay but it's not good for streaming you're not going to be you're only going to be really recording gameplay and your voice nothing else unfortunately so let's have a look at the test footage and then we'll come back see if there's any workarounds for a couple of the issues that i've presented so far <laughs> Now that's, that was disappointing for me. Looking at the video quality of this was disappointing. I recorded that in the inbuilt software and then I downloaded XSplit to see if I could get uh, a bit of a, a nicer quality, see if I could get things looking a little bit sharper, a little bit cleaner and a little bit better. And unfortunately, I couldn't. XSplit was flaky with this card. It worked. I've seen people say, oh, you, it doesn't work, you can't do it. It, it worked. It does work. It works fine, it does it, but it's flaky. Meaning that sometimes your bit rate will just significantly drop whilst you're recording with this card sometimes the card will just bail out completely and just be like i'm off i'm not i'm not i'm i'm not having this anymore and it'll just it'll just go and then other times it will work fine 
but the the video quality on X on uh, OBS, sorry, and XSplit I did try it on was no was no better unfortunately, and that's the major drawback for me of this card. I know this card isn't necessarily aimed fully at gamers. And it will do great if you're if you've got a video input that you're trying to capture to convert to a different codec or a different format. However, for gaming, which is what most of you would buy it for, and for streaming and stuff like that, which is advertised for the product, is supported for streaming out of the box, and that's for a reason. It just it doesn't cut it. It doesn't cut it for me, unfortunately. So it does the job. It will take a video source and it will change it to a different codec. It will record it, but you've got no pass through, meaning your DVI port you have to get a splitter, meaning there's no HDMI or Display Port input input for restricted up to 60 frames per second. So then you can do even higher with in software. So I was expecting more from this card, and maybe my expectations expectations sorry were too high. But unfortunately, this card just wasn't what I hoped it was always going to be. So maybe getting a Razer Ripsort is unfortunately the better solution. Maybe getting an Algato PCIe capture card is maybe the better solution. And that pains me to say it, but it serves a purpose. It just doesn't do it and it doesn't refine the way it does it to a high enough quality for me for it to be used on a daily basis. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure to drop a like, rate and subscribe. If you'd like to buy one of these, then you can use the link in the description below. I'll also put links to alternative products that I have recommended, such as the Razer Ripsaw and the Algato PCIe Capture cards. And as always, we will see you in the next Geek A What video.